One thing that's true for all moms, we have a lot of stories to tell. Some are silly, some are gross, some bring us to tears. With each story that's shared, another mom feels a little less alone. So join us as we laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm Mom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the I'm Mom Podcast. Chloe, Megan, Susan are here, and I'm Abby. Thank you so much for joining us today. Megan is telling today's story. Um, and honestly, I was going to tell today's story because I confess I yell at my kids. Like, I'm a yeller. I I, I've yelled at my husband before and he's like, you just yelled at me. I'm like, I was just speaking with passion. I wasn't <laughs> mad. And he's like, yes, but you yell. I'm like, okay. So it's something that I definitely can relate to. And I have dealt with a lot of shame and guilt over, but Megan is telling today's story. So thank you, Megan, for making me feel not so bad. Oh, well, it's not about me. I never yell. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I'm kidding. I probably yell more than anyone. I am over a quarter Italian and we just talk loudly as it is. So it always sounds like I'm yelling. Um, but (laughs) I, I yell at my kids all the time. Unfortunately, my husband rarely does, but the other day he, um, was, he was tired. We had been traveling for a long time and he was having to pack to unpack and repack to get ready to go on another trip. And, um, his uncle who passed away when he was younger has given him this really nice, like Stetson hat or I don't know, it was some sort of like nice cowboy hat. Um, And so it's, it's important to him because it's one of the things that his uncle left him and he was like packing it for this trip. And my three-year-old came in and was, you know, of course wanting to put it on and play with it. And he, he didn't, he doesn't understand that it's like an important treasure from his uncle. And so he was kind of like playing with it and messing with it and my husband just kind of snapped at him and yelled at him and told him you know not to touch it and I was kind of like whoa you know I've never heard you I mean he was tired too so he just had a short fuse and he felt so bad right after he did that because then my son didn't want to put on the hat and like play with the hat anymore and he just got this look on his face and started getting those big crocodile tears and my husband was like you can play with it it's okay I'm sorry I shouldn't have like you know snapped at you like that here put it on put it on he was like no I don't want to put it on I I don't want to mess it up um and so he was afraid he was gonna mess it up at that point and my husband's like I just feel horrible now. I just feel terrible. Like, I can't believe I just did that. It doesn't even matter. Um, And I was like, I have yelled at him for way less than that. So (laughs) it's, it's, but all that to say, he apologized to him and, you know, they were fine in two seconds because toddlers forget, but (laughs) he just felt so bad. And I always feel bad after I, after I yell at them, I mean, sometimes they deserve it, but I wish I could be, you know, there's that, that theory now of gentle parenting and how to, you know, gently guide your kids to what you want them to do. And I'm just like, I watch these videos and I'm like, I am never going to be able to do that. Mm. I'm just always going to yell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was interesting as you were telling that story, I was thinking about how my, my dad never yelled at me. My dad, he's not a yeller. My mom was, was a yeller. But like when you imagine like the parents from maybe the 50s, 60s and before, the dad was the stern one. The dad was the yeller. Yeah. And the mom was the sweet, like genteel kind of one that kept the peace. But now I feel like it's more about moms yelling than dads. I think that in yeah. a, a lot more families, maybe it's just my personal experience and the people I know, the moms are the ones that lose their cool more often and the dads are the ones that are more calm. And like you said, I never see him. I've never seen him yell. I wonder why that is. Well, I can't say that Mark is the calmer one. However, I can relate to the Hampton story because I tend to yell not related to what they did, but related to either my own stress mm-hmm. or fatigue. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And are women more stressed and fatigued today? Maybe. Yes. yes, I would say. Yeah, I think that speaking for myself, I bottle up a lot of the anger and the frustration and then I yell because I just can't keep it yeah. in anymore. So mm-hmm. it might, like you just said, it's not them, it's me because I've just reached the point where I can't right. not yell because on another day I wouldn't yell about that exactly exactly (laughs) well sometimes I feel like it doesn't sink in with the with the kids 
when I ask nicely over and over and over again until I take that stern tone of like, you need to do this or whatever it is. And then they like pipe up. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about about triggers and things like that. And one of them is a main one and really kind of an overarching one is that we feel powerless. Mm. So you yell because what you have tried to this point probably isn't working. And so you're like, "Uh, what do I do? And then you just react. But is that because we're not giving consistent consequences? So we shouldn't have to ask our children things three times. If we are doing that, then we're not stopping after the first time Mm -hmm. and taking the time to say, okay, there's, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, have you seen a toddler? <laughs> you can give them all the consequences all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might not even be a bad behavior. It might just be trying to get out the door and the right. shoes aren't getting right. being put on the feet. Or they said something and you just have to stop and say, okay, I'm going to give you a do over on that one. Right. Right. We're going to sit here until you do that right. Do you think there are certain personality types? Like, I mean, we've all taken the Mom I Am test and a lot of us know Enneagram or Myers-Briggs and all that. Do you think there are certain personality types that are more inclined to yell than others? Or does everybody have their reason for yelling or not yelling? So there's two things in there. This is probably going to confuse somebody. But sometimes you can be like Megan said, she's a quarter Italian. I'm half Italian. You know, Some personalities yell more, but it's not taken seriously because this is just the way they are. And there's no anger behind it. (laughs) But sometimes even a non-yeller can be angry. Yeah. And so there's that anger behind it. It's more detrimental than the flighty yeller. Mm -hmm. Not flighty, but you know what I mean? So it's not just the yelling. It's not the volume Do, Do some people get more angry than others? I would probably say yes. Is that a personality trait or is that situational or is it, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I've had to work on that with my husband. I actually just the other day we were talking about something and it was something kind of serious. And he was like, I, he said, um, I can tell you're getting mad. And I was like, I'm not mad. I was I have a passionate tone and I was I wasn't mad at him. I was just kind of trying to explain to him why I think he should do something and I was like oh my gosh like I'm sorry like and I'm I'm noticing that more like I have a very passionate tone but it's like I'm I not, do too I'm not mad I'm not upset like it's just I'm trying to communicate my feelings I have big feelings and I'm but it's not anger you yeah. know so I'm like that and what I've noticed too is if the person doesn't respond like they're getting it I get more passionate yes because I'm like <laughs> I want you to get they, this they yeah. think I'm getting mad I'm not I'm just yeah. like waiting for you to like understand yeah, me get on my level <laughs> yes. yeah. well I think it's kind of like how kids often say I'm sad when sadness isn't necessarily the emotion they're feeling so mm. he might say mad but it's because that's a very easy yeah, I, um, emotion where he might not yeah. be able to say, I can tell you're getting um, frustrated or passionate or, you know, something like that. You know, it might just be the easiest emotion to identify. We need the feel wheel from imom.com. <laughs> yeah, let's go yes. in. No, you go out from the center. Yeah. We need the advanced feel yeah, wheel from imom.com because <laughs> we have do now. Yeah. I think that, like, for me, like talking about the Mom I Am test, which I'll put a link to that in the show notes, my, the Mom I Am, I resonated most with the peaceful mom because I like, mm-hmm calm I like peace I like there to be peace not just like volume wise in my house but like between the people in my home I want everyone to get along and so it's funny that that would lead me to be more of a yeller because I think that I just like I said I bottle up all of it I repress a lot of it and so then it just eventually comes out we were on a cruise last summer and you know those cabins are not big Mm -hmm. at all and it was the four of us. I mean, my kids at the time, you know, they were uh, nine and ten. And they're not small children, but they're still nine and ten years old. But it was a tight fit. Mm. And my husband was constantly like, you need to get dressed. Da, 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 like on them and on them and on them. And I'm like, I know it's a tight space. I know it's a tight space. But it just made me upset because I'm like, this is our vacation. And please stop yelling at the kids. This is vacation. And then... Maybe four days in, one of them did something, and I like swung the cabin door open, and I was like, "Get out of the room!" Oh yeah. <laughs> and he, my husband, pulled me aside. He's like, "You've been on me about all these things I've been saying. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have been building that 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 mercury has been rising in you." I'm like, "I know, 
I know, yeah. I know. So it's like finding that for me, it's like, how do I balance? I don't want to just constantly nag or constantly be on my kids, but how else does that come out? How do you release the pressure valve, you know, like in the pressure cooker? How do you let some of that steam out so that you don't burst? Mm. And you can only head off so much. So then when it does go out, what do you do? So that your kids know, right? like, this is just... I'm just, you know what? I just got frustrated. This is me. It's not you. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, what you did was wrong, but I'm just, I'm just having a bad yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah. Because my dad was an intense, 100% Italian. And I, I, the small trips, there were four of us kids and he, we traveled all over in a camper, oh, all gosh. six of us. And as we got bigger, oh my gosh, yeah. it, it was, my dad was always gritting his teeth, you know, and we just knew my mom was super calm, but we just learned to know that doesn't mean he's really mad or anything. This is just his views. Like he has this limit. Right. And we didn't take it that seriously because, oh yeah, he's going to have a few of those. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but we knew he didn't, it wasn't personal. Yeah. Oh, I hope my kids know that. Cause I don't know how many times I can apologize and be like, I mm. overreacted mm. Yeah. or they just are like, we're, we're tired of hearing it, mom. <laughs> I yeah. feel like one day they're going to be like, we've had enough with you. No. We're out of here. Um, so a lot of moms believe things about yelling that it's just not true. And one of them is that nobody else yells. When I hear stories of my friends, like when they say, oh, I lost it on my kids. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know. Mm. So if that's you. Don't believe it. Everybody yells. And then also that we're damaging our kids. And I think that, that you know, there's a little asterisk there. If all you do is yell right. and you're very intense, then maybe you're hurting your kids. And I've thought about that before. Like, what does my face look like when I yell? Wow. And if they see that over and over again, then yes, they might be scared. But if you yell at your kids, but you're also balancing it with loving your children more often than you're yelling, I think that... You don't have to worry about your kids ending up in therapy. Yeah. I don't know. But not but but also if you are yelling, then your face probably does match it. And so what can you do if you're like me and it's usually because I've overstressed my life, mm-hmm. I've added too much. Yeah. What can I do to change my life so that I have more space and I'm more relaxed and I'm not, you know, venting on my kids all the yeah. time. Mm. Well, we were talking about this over lunch today and I was talking with one of the girls who is a single mom and she said, the problem I have is that I can't, I can't escape to anywhere right? because she has her daughter pretty much hundred percent of the time. And she said, you know, I don't have anyone to pass her off to when I need a moment to breathe. And when I say I'm, I'm going into the bathroom, she's at the door two minutes later mm-hmm. crying because I'm upset and she's upset and she knows that she's done something wrong or whatever. So I feel for the the moms who either their husband's away a lot and there is no relief because yeah. mm-hmm. then how do you, like you said, Susan, how do you figure out how yeah. to give yourself that space you need? I think it's really hard and I think you have to find those no zone places. Like I used to literally go cry in the shower. Like that Aww. was my place. Don't ever ever interrupt my shower mm-hmm. yeah. husband children I don't care who you are they all know Megan that's my, you that's made my your mom space. cry in the shower <laughs> <laughs> oh I was just thinking my brain did go somewhere I thought of a story of my mom and we can take this out if she wants but no, no, one time we she, will take it yeah. out oh yes no I know one what you're time, gonna say one time she was so mad and I, I mean I must have been younger than 10 because it was in our old house and she was standing at the kitchen counter and I don't know what we were doing. We must have been being brats for her to do this, but she was like unloading the groceries. And then I don't know how she, all of a sudden she had a wooden spoon in her hand and she just whacked it so hard down on the counter that it split in half. And we all like looked up and we were just like terrified. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, oh, I didn't really get physical didn't. very much. So when I did that, yeah. I remember, I yeah, feel like that's something I would what do. I thought you were going to say is I did now I, I was married so I could do this if you're we, we were talking about single moms you can't do this but I did have moments of intense pressure where I would literally look at Mark and I'd say I'm out nobody can call me and I would get in my car and I would say to him you know where I'll be <laughs> I would drive to Ballast Point Park and I would park there and I always took my Bible, I took a journal, I took my calendar, whatever I did. And I would literally, it's really hot in Florida, so don't judge me on this, sit in my car with the, with the engine running in the air conditioning, sometimes for hours. Wow, and I would yeah. have to find peace with God with mm-hmm. whatever yeah. was going on. Mm-hmm. And the kids would try to call me and I'd say, 
like the first couple times I did it and they were old enough, they'd get worried. Well, where did you go? You were so upset when you left. I say, you don't ever have to worry. I'm at Ballast Park. I'm not going to answer the phone. I need to be with God and nobody else right now. And I'll always come back. Yes, Mm -hmm. I'll always come back. I'll be with God and nobody else. I can't be with anybody right Mm -hmm. now. I have to go get a grip on myself. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. (laughs) Well, and it's about making peace with, with God and forgiving yourself because that's, for me, that's the burden I carry when it's over. I, I know that whatever they did was just yeah. kid stuff, kid misbehaving, kid m- mayhem. But for me, it's like letting go of the shame that I'm feeling after I've really lost it. And in those cases, it wasn't that I was, I had lost it. It's because I knew I was going to lose it. Mm. Oh, yeah. And somebody was going to take the brunt force of this anger mm-hmm. about whatever I was upset about. And I needed to go get peace yeah. with it without taking it out on the wrong people. Mm. Well, here's, little people. So here's an idea for that. Instead of how to respond instead of react whenever you've been triggered in a moment like that. And I'll say this right off the bat. This really takes some mindfulness. So I understand if you're like, oh, please, I couldn't do that. But you're going to know how to do this at least. And yeah. that's a good step you in going forward. Tools. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the first step. So this is how to respond instead of react when you're triggered. Step one is to pause. And the reason you have to pause is because... This is fight or flight kicking in. Your body is saying this is an emergency because everything has shot up and starts going in your body. And yelling is an involuntary reaction sometimes. You're not, you never have to say, I'm going to yell now. You never have to tell yourself to yell. You just yell. So pausing tells yourself this is not an emergency. Step two is to check in with what you feel. Do you feel powerless? Do you feel annoyed? Do you feel tired? And when you're able to identify that feeling, you're able to realize that you are human and that you're allowed to feel these things. Mm -hmm. Step three is to then reframe it and look at it through your kid's eyes. So like my kids get rowdy at bedtime. They always like their energy level shoots through the the roof, maybe because they know they're about to have to lay down. Maybe it's because the sun has set and things feel different at night. It might be because they know that going to bed means they have to get up and go to school. And so they don't want to go to bed. So reframing the situation and looking at it through their eyes, um, you know, it shows you that your children are are people trying to get their needs met at the same time you're trying to get your needs met. And sometimes those needs are incompatible. So reframe the situation. And then lastly, choose a response. So you know how you feel. You know how they are probably feeling. And you can say, for me, like for this situation, on a good night, I might say, I know you guys are having fun, so you have five more minutes to get the sillies out, and then we got to brush our teeth and yeah. start moving to bed. For, for you, the choice, it might depend on your bandwidth, what you have available that night. Maybe you don't have the bandwidth to say you have five more minutes, and maybe the answer for you, the response that's appropriate, is to just walk away. Yeah. You mm-hmm. just have to turn around and walk away. But by pausing checking in with yourself, looking at it from their situation and from their perspective, and then choosing that response. And all that can happen in like 10 seconds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be a 30 minute process that can enable you to turn your reaction into a response, which I think would prevent me from losing it a lot of the time. And I think you don't have to feel guilty if it's more than a 10 second response. If you like need to really step away and say, look, mommy has to go to her room right now because she's about to explode over this situation and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go think about it. You guys go to your room and think about it. Put the baby in their crib for 15 Mm -hmm. minutes. It's Mm -hmm. okay, even if the baby cries for 15 minutes. And I think it's a good example to the kids of, yeah, sometimes we have to step away to get a hold of our Mm -hmm. anger or somebody else's takes the brunt of it. Yeah. Yeah. I just did that this morning in a way. We had to be to school early and my older son I gave them, I told them, I said, I'm waking you up. You have 25 minutes from the point I get you up until we have to be out the door. And we had talked about it the night before. We talked about it last night. I said, all right, if you want to sleep until this time, know that you have this much time to get up. We will eat granola bars in the car. Like This is how it's going to go. He spent the first 18 minutes laying in bed Mm -hmm. because he felt nauseous. And he's he's been sick lately. And so I felt for him. But he's in the bathroom then. And I'm like, I see his uniform on the floor. And I was like... You're not dressed yet. It was 6.45 and we had to be out the door at 6.50 and he didn't even have his clothes on. His teeth weren't brushed. His hair wasn't brushed. And I knew we were going to be late and it was a parent teacher conference. And I'm like, I don't want to set a bad impression. So again, like what you said, Susan, this was about me. I was worried 
about looking bad in front of the teachers because we were five minutes late and how irresponsible that made me look. And that sent my anxiety going up, Mm -hmm. up, 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 up. And so I said, guys, I don't want to lose it. I feel like I'm about to lose it. And I just walked down the hall. So like even expressing how I'm feeling is setting Mm -hmm. that example. Maybe walking away is the example for you or saying I'm having a hard time controlling my emotions right now. Telling that other person, this is what I'm feeling, I think is, I'm hoping I'm setting that good example for them. I think that's such a key thing that you said, though, is also understanding what our triggers are, like what people are going to think about Mm -hmm. me, pride. Megan, you had a situation like similar to that in church on Christmas Eve when James was acting out in front of everybody. It's hard not to get mad and angry when what we're triggered and to know our triggers and to be able to talk ourselves through them is important too. Mm. Well, it's similar to our conversation about the, when you have a child who's a sore loser, like, you know, if your kid stomps off the mat at the the, the field, you are embarrassed in front of the other parents. And so like, what's your reaction to that? Is it based on how you're feeling about yourself or your child teaching them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Have you ever heard of the strategy to whisper instead of yell? I have. Oh my gosh, I have the funniest story. One of my friends, she was one of five kids and her mom was like the sweetest, most soft spoken. I mean, she homeschooled all five of them for a long time. And she is still to this day, like the nicest lady. But she said that if any of the five of them acted up, that her mom would like pinch the back of their arm, you know, like uh, in your upper arm, like mm-hmm. pinch Ow, the back of it that hurts. and go, I am so ashamed of you right now. I'm like, oh. whisper it in their ear. Oh, oh that gosh, that's deep. Deep. Yikes. And, and she would say that she, they, she would like pinch them and like drag them, not drag them, but, you know, escort them out of wherever it was into, you know, the car or whatever. But she said, I knew I was in big trouble. And my mom would whisper in my ear. I am so ashamed of you right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you ever try the whisper thing, Susan? I didn't. I didn't. I don't know if I could have the the self-control to do it, but I have a friend who does it. She says her kids know she's very angry when her voice gets really low and like just deep and low and and quiet. And another friend, I mentioned her before, the one that's pregnant with baby number seven. I I think I talked about the whisper thing in another episode or in an article or something like that. It must have been in an article. She's like, my kids wouldn't hear me. Like yeah, there's, there's seven so much of them. noise in the house. Like if I'm whispering to get you know them to do something, they just wouldn't hear me. And I'm guessing the theory is that if they see you whispering, they're going to be like, "Uh oh, what's mom saying?" Or not even "Uh oh," just curiosity. And so everyone's going to naturally quiet down. No, I don't know yeah. about that, but I have done the sit down thing. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to sit here. No, yeah. I. Ha- I had teachers in school that would do the whisper thing. They, yes, they refused like younger when I was in elementary school, they had, they would refuse to yell. And so they would just talk like this until the whole class would yeah, like look yeah. at them. Until someone catches on that that's what's happening. And they're like, well, we can just keep talking because she's just going to stand it's, there and uh, yeah. whisper. It depends on the kids. You have. It works. Yeah. I don't know though. It works. Like she would just whisper and talk like this. And then everyone would be like, what is she saying? And get really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good strategy. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that about like how to, so we're talking about ways to yell less. So one way is to try whispering. Another one is to tell your kids what you're feeling or, you know, just walk away. Another one that I read, and I, I don't know, I think this is in response to the feeling powerless is to name out loud five things you can control. I mean, my, my kids would think that was really weird. Like, what is she lost her mind? What is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> what that, are you talking about? Sorry, if you're that mad about something, you're not going to be right. like, oh, let me take a step back. And <laughs> no. I can adjust the thermostat. I can go have a yeah. snack. I think I was losing I can, it. <laughs> they would think you're crazy. Well, <laughs> Which would get them to stop doing whatever True. crazy thing they're doing. Um, okay, so then say you've, you've yelled mm-hmm. how to repair the damage. We talked about saying what you did wrong, asking for a do-over. I, I usually apologize, you know, because even yeah. if they were doing something wrong, I shouldn't have raise my voice the way that I did. So I think that's important. I also heard a thing about like, you know, the whole like ratio of good interactions to bad interactions kind of thing. Like as far as giving compliments, there's all that stuff about more positive than negative. It takes so much more positive to outweigh the negative. There's um, an, uh, some stuff that got, that was put out by the Gottman Institute about a five to one ratio. This was for couples, but in conflict, you should have a ratio of five positive interactions during a conflict to every one negative one. And 
maybe it's that might be hard to implement with a child in a negative like in a in a within conflict it might be hard to do this but you know say you yell say you lose it that's the negative one then as you're still working through this situation you can still say something positive to them you can offer affectionate words or touch you can find ways to agree you know like I've yelled at my son during math homework so I could say you know what the way that they're teaching math is confusing. Mm, You're right. That's good. Or empathize. I struggled with algebra too. Yeah. Algebra also. And (laughs) algebra too, for that matter. Um, And then like be interested in what your child says. You know, if your child, if you, if if they're in trouble for something and you've yelled and then you say, you know, why did you do that? Be interested. Listen, that's a positive interaction. So, you know, kind of thinking about, am I damaging my kids because I'm yelling at them? Mm -hmm. Well, work on the positive things then. work on five positive things for every one negative thing in that conflict. It's good. And I think if somebody in your life, like in my case, I can think of a season when it was my husband who said to me, you're angry all the time. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Don't be the frog in the pot that just lets this mm-hmm. temperature in your home keep going up yeah. and up and up. You know, get help. Have a friend come in and talk to them about, you know, what's going on and help you unravel why you are so angry Mm -hmm. all the time or go to counseling if you can afford it and get just get somebody to help you. You don't want that to become the norm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or don't blame yourself or don't um, label yourself a yeller. You know, I've said that so many times. I'm a yeller. I'm a yeller. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm not. I I have yelled before and it's something I'm working on and I'm sure I'm going to yell again, but no, my home is a peaceful place. Yeah. Just say it over and over again. I'll You're a up. peace-loving yeller. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it, Abby. <laughs> yeah. It's all repressed, I promise. <laughs> all right, is yelling your go-to form of communication? What have you tried to do to curb it, and how's it working for you? We would love to hear from you um, and to share your comments in future episodes. So email us via the link in the show notes, and that's where you can find all the good stuff we talked about today. We'll include the feel wheel, um, the Mom I Am personality test, and so make sure you check it out. Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.